All right, question number 76 is from current electricity and the experimental part of current electricity. Remember, this is the second question of the same topic we are discussing. So, which clearly indicates the experimental part has to be taken very, very seriously. So, one thing we have said already, the portion which are only in J means and the second you can understand is the experimental part. It's about the meter bridge. On interchanging the resistances, the balance point of a meter bridge shifts to the left by 10 centimeter. So, whatever was the null point on interchanging, on flipping the resistances, it shifts towards left by 10 centimeter. The resistance of the series combination is 1 kilo ohm. Those two resistances which were used R1 and R2, the sum is 1 kilo ohm. How much was the resistance on the left slot before interchanging the resistances? schematic diagram of the meter bridge. So, here is that meter bridge and let us say this is the connecting wire and even here this is the connecting wire and here comes. So, I will leave a slot here for one resistance and another slot for another resistance. So, here comes something like this. This one let us call it as R1 and this one let us call it as R2 and a galvanometer needs to be connected. So, here is the galvanometer and this is the jockey. So, this particular length is 1 meter 100 centimeter the meter bridge. Now, initially if I say L is the balance length then quite obviously this balance length has to be 100 minus L. So, you need to understand the unit of length has been kept in centimeter, no problem. Now, what is the conclusion that we can draw from the first one? You can see R1 divided by L will be equals to R2 divided by 100 minus L. So, that is the first part of the solution. Now, we will go to the second part. It says on interchanging, so R1 would be replaced by R2 and R2 would be replaced by R1. The balance length shifts towards left by 10 centimeter. So, this is now R2. So, what would be the thing by the same pattern R2 by this length is going to be L minus of 10 and this resistance is R1 now divided by what would be the remaining length quite obviously that would be 110 minus of L because 10 goes there. So, 10 will be added. You see there are two equations and we have three variables R1, R2, L. No worries there is another value which is given that when the resistances are kept in series R1 plus R2 comes out to be 1 kilo ohm or straight way you can write it as 1000 ohm. Well, these are the three simultaneous equations and you just need to solve it. When you solve the value of R1, the left resistance will come out to be 550 ohm. So, the correct option for question number 76 is option number 2. Time to move forward for question number 77. All right, question number 77, rotation is here. So, at least you can say I have got the first question for rotation and from a uniform circular disc of radius r. So, this is that disc and mass 9 m. So, the disc without a hole without the cavity a small disc of radius r by 3 is removed as shown. Now, you need to understand that the complete disc without cavity has mass 9 m and now what has to be understood is we have in fact you see made a cavity. So, let me try to show it with the help of figure here so that you can understand it properly and this is the cavity and the cavity has a radius of r by 3. Quite obviously the total disc without cavity had mass 9 m. So, what would be the mass of the disc which is removed? Mass is distributed in area and area is 1 ninth so, that is a straightforward thing the mass of the removed part the smaller one is m. Now, you need to understand that this particular thing is removed. So, this would be a cavity that is the part you need to understand. 
Now, the moment of inertia of the remaining disc about an axis perpendicular to the plane of the disc and passing through center. So, here my thumb is the axis. So, we need to use parallel axis and the superposition property. Let us try to calculate that particular value. So, here if I do it for this, first let me call it as I1. I1 is of the complete disc and that is going to be 9 m r square divided by 2 because for a disc, about an axis passing through center and perpendicular is m r square by 2. Now, for the disc which is removed, let us try to calculate the moment of inertia about this and that I would be calling it as I 2. So, I 2 would be for the disc here, the mass is m, the radius is r by 3 whole square divided by 2 is the moment of inertia about this axis then you need to shift it by the parallel axis theorem m 2 r by 3 whole square. So, I 1 is the moment of inertia of the entire disc without cavity. I 2 is the moment of inertia of that small removed disc about this particular thing. So, now the net moment of inertia about this would be straightway I 1 minus of I 2. You need to subtract these two value and with a simple calculation, you are going to get 4 mr square. So, therefore, the correct option for question number 77 would be option number 4. So, question number 77 has a correct option, option number 4. Now, it is time to move to question number 78. Okay, question number 78, another question from collision, but this has a bit of surprise element. In a collinear collision happening in a straight line, the head on collision, a particle with an initial speed v0 strikes a stationary particle of the same mass and if the final total kinetic energy is 50 percent greater, oh my god, the final energy is coming out to be greater. So, this has to be called as a super elastic collision. We need to calculate the magnitude of the relative velocity between the two particles after collision. All right, so here what we need to do is that if I say, let me just try to draw a situation here, and let us say this is the first particle, and there is another particle, and these two particles would be colliding, and let us say the initial speed is u. So, that is the initial situation. Now, let us try to see what happens after collision. This is the first one, this is the second one and let us say that the value this is v 1 and this is v 2, the masses are identical and the question says the final kinetic energy is 50 percent more than the initial kinetic energy. So, what is the conclusion or the mathematics behind it? You could see one half m v 1 square plus of v 2 square is going to be the final kinetic energy and that will be you see 3 by 2 times one half m u square because the final kinetic energy is 50 percent more than the initial kinetic energy. That is equation number 1. Equation number 2 a very straightforward calculation that m u is going to be equals to m v 1 plus of m v 2 that is equation number 2. Now, you would be requiring a bit of mathematics to calculate v 1 minus of v 2 that is very straightforward you see 1 you know v 1 square plus v 2 square the value is there the value of v 1 plus v 2 is there. Now, what I can say is that an easier way just to help you solve this question from these two particular fact, you can easily calculate v 1 v 2 that is done. You can even calculate v 1 minus of v 2 whole square and that is v 1 plus v 2 whole square minus of 4 v 1 v 2. So, I am just trying to assist you in the calculation. So, v 1 v 2 you can put it here v 1 plus v 2 whole square from here you can do it and doing all the small calculation you are going to get the value of v 1 minus v 2 which is the relative velocity and that is root 2 times u 
you just require a slight bit of effort but you would certainly be getting and that u is of course v naught so therefore the correct option would be option number one so here lies the solution of question number 78 where the correct option is option number one time to move for question number 79